Meanwhile, Eileen is in a hurry to make a stone axe to help Chintian. She rips her dress and collects ashes. Chintian asks what she is doing, and Eileen claims that ashes can blind the boars so they can escape. Eileen then realizes that she has been talking to Chintian, and he appears with a fish in hand. Eileen looks glad and hugs Chintian. She was afraid that she wouldn't see him again. She notices that he is wet, and he claims it is a long story. It got awkward when Chintian started stripping. Elin tells him that they are not kids anymore and reminds him to dry his clothes first. Just then, Chintian flashes himself to Elin. Elin quickly covers her eyes and Chintian claims he was wearing underpants that night. Elin feels bad about leaving the bamboo shoots behind. Chintian tells her that he killed the boar. Elin worries about encountering the boars again and Chintian can only think of making a bow and arrow to fight back. The next morning, Chintian quickly returns to the boar he killed and discovers that other animals found it. Luckily, there are more parts left. He notices a scratch mark from another animal. He starts butchering the boar and brings it back to the camp with bamboo tool. Meanwhile, Elin is making a needle from a rabbit's bone, and Shintian surprises her. Elin gets mad and notices the meat Shintian brought back. Elin wonders how he will use the fat, and Shintian claims that it can be used to make a fat-based oil. However, they don't have a container. Shintian then asks Elin for help making one. He plans to do pottery and he feels lucky that the clay nearby is usable. He remembers the steps from the survival book. He tries to make one, but it looks like something unusable, so he throws it away. He then makes a small bowl and discovers Elin made better-looking ones. He then asks her to make one big enough for cooking. Chintian makes a kiln for drying the clay until it gets dark. During dinner, Chintian feels glad that they won't have food problems for the next month. Elin notices Chintian smiling and claims that he is just happy to be alive. Chintian compliments Elin's ability to mend. Elin claims she must learn how because they don't have any clothes to change into. Chintian then tells her not to worry because they can change their clothes soon. The next day, Elin wonders if they can actually brush their teeth with the wood ash Chintian mentioned, some science stating that it's a good substitute for real toothpaste. Later, they begin preparing the pottery bowls, and Chintian mentions that it will take five hours to harden. This surprises Elin, and Chintian tells her that they must control the heat properly. Otherwise, the pottery will develop cracks. After the first batch of bowls is completed, the success rate is disappointingly low, prompting them to think of new techniques they could try instead. Later that night, during Elin's shift, the success rate gradually improves, indicating that they could make more if they could control the heat. The next day, as rain is approaching, Chintian cooks the pork fat, while Elin wonders why he is adding water to it. Chintian explains that water helps reduce the risk of the fat getting overburned. They also prepare by grinding clamshells into powder to make soap. Chintian emphasizes the importance of making soap since there are no drugs on the island, and if they get sick, it could be life-threatening. Using soap reduces that risk. As they let the soap formulate throughout the day, they prepare for the impending downpour. Luckily, the duo has finished building the tents, otherwise they wouldn't have anywhere to stay. Chintian opens the system and with the pottery and soap he made, he now has over 6,000 points. However, he still needs another 500 points to buy the power of any creatures. Elin appears and questions Chintian about what he's thinking, but he reflects on the situation and asks her what took her so long. He also asks if the soap works. Elin calmly mentions that it does the job, and expresses their luck in having the soap. Chintian prepares to make the bamboo bow, and attempts to create a multi-layered structured bow to improve efficiency. He places some stumps in the ground as a makeshift mould since he has no other options. Suddenly, the sky begins to thunder, and the duo quickly rushes into the tent together and goes to sleep. During the night, Chintian wakes up upon hearing a sound and quickly wakes up Elin. He tells her that they have to disband the tent and urges her to climb up the tree. Elin wonders what's going on when suddenly a group of wild boars run through their campsite. Elin wonders if a few of the boars are dead as it appears they are wounded, but it turns out they are just taking a nap. The rain continues to pour, and the boars are not leaving yet. Chintian uses his shoe to distract the boars, and they run away. Chintian tells Elin to get down, and the girl slips down, falling on Chintian, who blushes. Morning comes, and Chintian is surprised to get 3,000 points for surviving the rainy night. The two start fixing their camp. Elin is glad that the rabbits are still caged. Chintian hopes the wood sticks they have will dry sooner. Later, Chintian asks Elin to remove her underwear. He plans to wash clothes and bathe at the same time, but Elin refuses. Chintian notices the stream's water is higher than before. Luckily, the first trap is still usable as the clothes must first dry. Chintian wears leaves in the meantime. That night, Elin worries that the boars will return, 
and Chin Tian offers to do the night watch first. Seeing Elin feel unsafe, Chin Tian wants to make more weapons to fight the boars. He creates the bow and uses a boar's muscle as a string. Jin Tian set to work crafting his arrows, taking care to burn the wooden tips and sharpen them. He knew that sharp stones could serve as arrowheads too. With each completed arrow, he earned points. Finally, he finished making the bow and arrows he needed. Now, he had a choice between two new skills, speed or strength. After some thought, he chose speed and instantly felt a surge of strength coursing through him. The next day, Jin Tian noticed the damaged ceramics that had been destroyed by the boars. He suggested to Aelin that they work on remaking the ceramics together. Their skills had improved, and this time the ceramics turned out even better. Jin Tian continued practicing with his bow, but his aiming skills were not very good at first. He was determined to get better, so he practiced tirelessly until his accuracy improved. Following his archery practice, Jin Tian ventured deep into the woods. There he observed tadpoles in a pond, marvelling at the intricate ecosystem. He also gathered some bamboo shoots and heard the chirping of birds. To his surprise, he discovered a group of wild chickens. He took aim with his bow and arrow, but his first shot missed. Determined not to miss again, he kept trying until he managed to hit one, then two more. However, he soon realised that he had used up all his arrows and the other chickens had fled. That evening, they made chicken soup using their catch. Elin was delighted with the new addition to their menu and Jin Tian found it delicious, especially with the bamboo shoots. He suggested that adding salt would make it even better. Elin's excitement was short-lived though, as she remembered they were in a remote location with no access to salt. Jin Tian came up with a plan. They would go to the beach the next day to collect seawater and make their own salt. At the beach, while waiting for the seawater to boil, they crafted a sundial to keep track of time. Jin Tian managed to evaporate the seawater and obtain crude salt, but he knew it needed further purification. Using his survival knowledge, he fashioned a filtration device. It was a slow process, but eventually they had clean, purified salt. Ilin was ecstatic about their dinner once again, while Jin Tian joked about adding seasonings to their Chinese cuisine. They realised it had been 20 days since their arrival on the island, and discussed their plans for the future. Jin Tian needed a fishing boat to sustain them during their journey. Ilin suggested improving their shelter, but Jin Tian thought it would be wiser to find a new camping spot. After four days of searching, Jin Tian stumbled upon a meadow with a nearby cave. As he cautiously explored the cave, he suddenly sensed danger and swiftly dodged an attack with his cheetah-like speed. To his surprise, a strange-looking panda had attacked him. He attempted to distract the panda with a bamboo branch, but it only crushed the branch. Jin Tian's heart races as he looks around, bewildered by the strange and unfamiliar scene before him. With a sense of unease, he decides to flee, dashing towards a towering tree and using his agility to swiftly ascend its sturdy branches. He readies an arrow, but his first shot merely bounces off the panda's thick fur. The creature, now aware of Chin Tian's presence, regards him with a mix of caution and curiosity, and takes aim once more. This time his shot finds its mark, drawing a trickle of blood from the panda's side. Despite the injury, the panda remains resolute. It charges toward Chin Tian, who narrowly evades the attack, his heart pounding in his chest. That night, under the dim light of the campfire, Elin proposes a different approach, she suggests exploring other areas to settle in, ignoring the panda and its cave. Chin Tian, however, devises a new plan. He fashions an arrowhead from his arrow belt tie and envisions a makeshift furnace to melt the iron needed for his arrows. Working together, they construct a wind fan and direct its gusts into the furnace. With determination and teamwork, they succeed in melting the iron. Exhausted but determined, Elin collapses, her fatigue evident. Chin Tian quickly pours the molten iron into moulds she prepared, the sizzling liquid hardening into arrowheads. Night falls, and Chin Tian hones the arrowheads to a deadly point, his hopes resting on their effectiveness against the formidable panda. Yearning for more knowledge, Chin Tian attempts to purchase an animal encyclopedia, only to be presented with a more enticing option by the system. He chooses books on animal behaviour, taming techniques and combat strategies. With newfound wisdom, he continues to sharpen his skills, all while keeping Aelin at bay from the dangerous panda. Over time, Chin Tian notices Aelin adapting to island life. As days turn into weeks, he returns to the cave, firing arrows within its dark depths. The panda's absence raises his suspicions, prompting him to wait in a tree. Eventually, the panda re-emerges, and the system reveals its ancient origin as a carnivore. Chin Tian envisions a plan, to weaken the panda until it can no longer sustain itself. Day after day, Chin Tian inflicts minor injuries on the panda, using hit-and-run tactics, but on the fourth day, the panda's tactics change, 
and it counters his assault. The panda's intelligence is growing, leaving Chin Tian no choice but to retreat. During his journey back to camp, Chin Tian stumbles upon a remarkable discovery, poison dart frogs. A solution forms in his mind, and he captures one of these deadly creatures. Returning to camp, he is met with Elin's worried embrace. As they talk, he explains his plan to utilise the frog's toxin for his arrows. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps.